In the first video, I have started describing and explaining vasanas. To continue the same topic, I start second video. I start with sanskara. Every experience is associated with a number of factors, people, sounds, taste, smells, etc. The five senses plus the mind as the sixth and produces three possible outcomes, positive, negative or neutral. If the experience is pleasurable or painful, it makes an impression on the mind. The impression sanskara links into the chitta, subconscious mind. After some time, days, month or even years, memory activates the dormant sanskara subliminal activator, which then produces a desire to either repeat or avoid the experience. <laughs> a repeated experience reinforces the sanskara. This explains why thoughts, desires, feelings keep on popping up into our minds without our volition or control. They are all due to the latent subconscious content of our minds. Vasanas. A reinforced sanskara or group of sanskaras produce a vasana or habitual pattern of behavior. Some of these vasanas are actively pursued and developed and are necessarily for our sociological functioning. <clears throat> for example, driving is a complex process which requires many sanskaras. Learning the road rules, traffic signs and signals, vehicle control, other traffic on the road, pre <coughs> pedestrians, etc., etc., all of which require learning and concentration and repeated practice. Once learned and dwelt into a vasana, driving becomes second nature. We can drive <coughs> competently while chatting, listening to music, thinking about issues, and even applying applying makeup and eating a meal. <coughs> Apart from these positive sanskaras and vasanas which are essential for our functioning as humans, there are also negative sanskaras which cause us suffering and obstruct our efficient functioning. These are our defense and avoidance mechanisms which we use to protect our egos and these are the ones we need to work with in our spiritual practice sadhana. And our all actions, they are controlled by these sanskaras and vasanas. People having negative vasanas will always, they will bent upon doing something wrong actions. And people with sattvic vasanas, good vasanas, they will always act positive deeds. So, our actions are completely controlled by our sanskaras and vasanas. So, as in my first video, I have described vasanas from talks with Ramana Maharishi. Now, I again take up the topic with the talk number 431. A Telugu gentleman stood up and asked, the mind is said to be pure when all its vasanas are wiped out. It is also the finality. When there is something to be gained, is it not duality? <coughs> Mercy. Let the mind be first made pure. If the same question arises thereafter, the answer may then be sought. Talk number 439. Dr. Rama asks, Brahma being pure, how can Maya arise from him and veil him also? Vasishta replies, 
in pure mind associated with strong dispassion this question will not arise of course in advaita non dualistic philosophy there can be no place for jiva isura and maya one self sinking into the self the vasanas tendencies will entirely disappear leaving no room for such a question maharshi the answers will be according to the capacity of the seeker it is said in the second chapter of gita that no one is born or dies but in the fourth chapter sri krishna says that numerous in carnations of his and of arjuna had taken place on known to him but not varjuna which of these statements is true both statements are true but from different standpoints now a question is raised how can jiva rise from the self i must answer only know your real being then you will not raise the question <coughs> why should a man consider himself separate how was he before being born or how will he be after death why waste time in such discussions what was your form in deep sleep why do you consider yourself as an individual devotee my form remains settled in deep sleep maharshi as is the effect so is the cause as is the tree so is its seed the whole tree is contained in the seed which later manifest as the tree the expanded tree must have a substratum which we call maya as a matter of truth there is neither seed nor tree there is only being devotee vasna akshaya total end of all predispositions manu nasha manu nasha annihilation of mind atma sakshat kara realization of the self they seem to be interdependent mercy the different expressions have only one meaning they differ according to the individual's stage of progress dispassion realization all mean the same thing also they say practice and dispassion why practice because the modes of mind once subside and then rise up again subside and rise up and so on devotee beginningless predisposition makes one do wrong without jnana this predisposition cannot vanish but jnana looks almost impossible expiation alone cannot undo all the karma for how much expiation will be needed look where we will everything look difficult even impossible association with the wise seem to be the only cure of all ills mercy what is to be done reality is only one one can it be how can it be realized A realization is thus all illusion practice seems to be necessary who is to practice looking for the doer the act and the accessories disappear moreover if realization is not present here and now how can it newly got be of any use what is permanent must be eternally present can it be newly got and be permanent also I realize what is present here and now the says did so before and still to that only hence they see that it looks as if newly got once veiled by ignorance and later revealed reality looks as if newly realized but it is not new talk 400 42 while explaining a stanza of his own sri bhagwan observed the sun illumines the universe whereas the sun of arunachala is so dazzling that the universe is obscured and an unbroken brilliance remains but it is not realized in the present state and can be realized only if the lotus of the heart blossoms the ordinary lotus blossoms in the light of the visible sun whereas the subtle heart blossoms only before the sun of suns <coughs> may arunachala make my heart blossom so that his unbroken brilliance may shine all along <coughs> further on sri bhagwan continued the mirror reflects 
objects yet they are not real because they cannot remain apart from the mirror similarly the world is said to be a reflection in the mind as it does not remain in the absence of mind the question arises if the universe is a reflection there must be a real object known as the universe in order that it might be reflected in the mind this amounts to an admission of the existence of an objective universe truly speaking it is not so therefore the dream illustration is set forth the dream world has no objective existence how then is it created some mental impressions should be admitted they are called vasanas how were the vasanas in the mind these the answer is they were subtle just as a whole tree is contained potentially in a seed so the world is in the mind then it is asked a seed is the product of the tree <coughs> which must have existed once in order that it may be reproduced so the world also must have been there some time the answer is no there must have been several in carnations to gather the impressions which are re manifested in the present form i must have existed before as i do now the state way to find an answer will be to see if the world is there admitting the existence of the world i must admit a seer who is no other than myself let me find myself so that i may know the relation between the world and the seer when i seek the self and abide as the self there is no world to be seen what is the reality then the seer only and certainly not the world such being the truth the man continues to argue on the basis of the reality of the world <coughs> whoever asked him to accept a belief for the world yoga vasishta clearly defines liberation as the abandonment of the false and remaining as being <coughs> talk 449 from a story being re- related by sri bhagwan the bodily functions may be forcibly controlled and the mind may be reveling in righteous thoughts one cannot control one's vasanas as easily as the physical frame talk number 449 devoti is not individuality anadi without beginning Mercy, investigate and see if there is any individuality at all. Ask the question after solving this problem. Namalwar says, In ignorance I took the ego to be myself. However, with right knowledge the ego is nowhere and only you remains as the self. both monists and dualists are agreed on the necessity of self realization let us do it first and then discuss the side issues advaita or dvaita cannot be decided on theoretical considerations alone if the self is realized the question will not arise at all even sukha had no confidence in his brahmacharya whereas sri krishna was sure of his brahmacharya self realization is designated by so many different names satya brahmacharya etc what is natural to the state of self realization forms the disciplinary course in the other state i am the body idea will become extinct only on self realization with its extinction the vasanas become extinct and all virtue will remain ever devoti sanskaras are said to be persist only in a gyani marsi yes they are bhoga hetu leading to enjoyment only and not bandha hetu devoti this fact is often abused by fakes who pretend to be sadhus but lead vicious lives they say it is prarabdha remnant of past karma how shall we mark off the fakes from the genuine sadhus maharshi the one who has given up the idea of being the doer cannot repeat this is my prarabdha 
the gyanis lead different lives is true for the benefit of others the gyanis cannot make use of this in explanation of their lives and conduct talk number 515 devotee in the explanation given yesterday it is said that the removal of avarna results in the annihilation of the karna sarira that is clear but how is the gross body considered to fall off to maharshi the vasanas are of two kinds bandha hetu causing bondage and bhoga hetu only giving enjoyment the gyani has transcended the ego and therefore all the causes of bondage are inoperative bandha hetu is thus at an end and prarabdha past karma remains as bhoga vasana to give enjoyment only therefore it was said that the sukshma sarira alone survives gyana kevala says that sanchita karma stored karma is at an end simultaneously with the rise of gyana that agami karma now collecting is no longer operative owing to the absence of the sense of bondage and that prarabdha will be exhausted by enjoyment bhoga only thus the last one and in course of time and then the gross body also falls away with it sarira traya the three bodies and karma traya the three karmas are mere phrases meant for the delectation of debaters a gyani is not affected by any of them an aspirant is instructed to find who he is if he does so he will take no interest in discussing such matters as above find the self and rest in peace talk number 562 there is a statement in the book vichara sangraha that though a person realizes the self once he cannot for that simple reason alone become a mukta he continues to remain a victim of vasanas latency sri bhagwan was asked whether the realization referred to was the same as the gyanis and if so why there should be a difference in their effects maharshi replies the experience is the same every person experiences the self consciously or unconsciously the agyanis experience is clouded by his latencies whereas the gyanis not so the gyanis experience of the self is therefore distinct and permanent a practitioner may be long a practitioner may by long practice gain a glimpse of the reality the this experience may be vivid for the time being and yet he will be distracted by the old vasanas and so his experience will not avail him such a man must continue his manana and nidhi dhyasana so that all the obstacles may be destroyed he will then be able to remain permanently in the real state talk 569 a mirror a mirror as we know it is an insentient object which reflects light what corresponds to a mirror in an individual the light of the self luminous self is reflected on mahatatva the reflected light is the mind ether or pure mind this illumines the vasanas latencies of the individual and hence the sense of i and this arises talk number 586 devotee is there any particular upasana method meditation which is more efficacious than others mercy all upasana are equally efficacious but each one takes easily to one kind of upasana which shoots his previous vasanas talk number 616 devotee is the jivanadi an entity or a figment of the imagination maharshi the yogis say that there is a nadi called the jivanadi atmanadi or paranadi the upanishad speak of a center from which thousands of nadis branch off some locate such a center in the brain 
and others in other centers. The Garba Upanishad traces the formation of the foetus and the growth of the child in the womb. The jiva is considered to enter the child through the fontanelle in the seventh month of its growth. In evidence thereof, it is pointed out that the fontanelle is tender in a baby and is also seen to pulsate. It takes some months for it to ossify. Thus, the jiva comes from above, enters through the fontanelle, and works through the thousands of the nadis which are spread over the whole body. Therefore, the seeker of truth must concentrate on the sahasrara, that is the brain, in order to regain his source. Pranayama is said to help the yogi to rouse the kundalini shakti which lies coiled in the solar plexus. The Sakti rises through a narrow called the Susumana, which is embedded in the core of the spinal cord and extends to the brain. If one concentrates on the Sahasrara, there is no doubt that the ecstasy of Samadhi ensues. The Vasanas, that is the latencies, are not however destroyed. The yogi is therefore bound to wake up from the samadhi because release from bondage has not yet been accomplished. He must still try to eradicate the vasanas in order that the latencies yet inherent in him may not disturb the peace of his samadhi. So he passes down from the sahasrara to the heart through what is called the jivanadi, which is only a continuation of the susumana. The susumana is thus a curve. It starts from the solar plexus, rises through the spinal cord to the brain, and from there bends down and ends in the heart. When the yogi has reached the heart, the samadhi becomes permanent. Thus we see that the heart is the final center. Some Upanishads also speak of 101 nadis which spread from the heart, one of them being the vital nadi. If the jiva comes down from above and gets reflected in the brain, as the yogis say, there must be a reflecting surface in action that must also be capable of limiting the infinite consciousness to the limits of the body. In short, the universal being becomes limited as a jiva. Such reflecting medium is furnished by the aggregate of the vasanas of the individual. It acts like the water in a pot which reflects the image of an object. If the pot be drained of its water, there will be no reflection. The object will remain without being reflected. The object here is the universal being consciousness which is all-pervading and therefore immanent in all. It need not be cognized by reflection alone. It is self-resplendent. Therefore, the seeker's aim must be to drain away the vasanas from the heart and let no reflection obstruct the light of eternal consciousness. This is achieved by the search for the origin of the ego and by diving into the heart. This is the direct method for self-realization. One who adopts it need not worry about nadis, the brain, the susmana, the pranadi, the kundalini, pranayama, or the six centers. The self does not come from anywhere else and enter the body through the crown of the head. It is as it is, ever sparkling, ever steady, unmoving, and unchanging. The changes which are noticed are not inherent in the self, which abides in the heart and is self-luminous, like the sun. The changes are seen in its light. The relation between the self and the body or the mind may be compared to that of a clear crystal and its background. If the crystal is placed against a red flower, it shines red. He placed against a green leaf, it shines green, and so on. The individual confines himself to the limits of the 
changeful body or of the mind which derives its existence from the unchanging self. All that is necessary is to give up this mistaken identity and that done the ever shining self will be seen to be the single non-dual reality. The reflection of consciousness is said to be in the subtle body, Sukshma Sarira, which appears to be composed of the brain and the nerves radiating from it to all parts of the trunk, chiefly through the spinal column and the solar plexus. When I was on the hill, Naina Kavakantha Ganpati Mani once argued that the brain was the seat of the vasanas because it consisted of innumerable cells in which the vasanas were contained and illuminated by the light of the self which projected from the heart. Only this said a person working or thinking. But I said, how can it be so? The vasanas must be with one's self and can never remain away from the self. If, as you say, the vasanas be contained in the brain and the heart is the seat of the self, a person who is decapitated must be rid of his vasanas and should not be reborn. You agree that it is absurd. Now can you say that the self is in the brain with the vasanas? If so, why should the head bend down when one falls asleep? Moreover, a person does not touch his head and say, I, therefore it follows that the self is in the heart and the vasanas are also there in an exceedingly subtle form. When the vasanas are projected from the heart, they are associated with the light of the self and the person is said to think, the vasanas which lie embedded in an atomic condition grow in size in their passage from the heart to the brain. The brain is the screen on which the images of the vasanas are thrown and it is also the place of their functional distribution. The brain is the seat of the mind and the mind works through it. So then this is what happens when a vasana is released and it comes into play, it is associated with the light of the self. It passes from the heart to the brain and on its way it grows more and more until it holds the field all alone and all the vasanas are thus kept in abeyance for the time being. <laughs> When the thought is reflected in the brain, it appears as an image on a screen. The person is then said to have a clear perception of things. He is a great thinker or discoverer. Neither the thought that is extolled as being original nor the thing nor the country which is claimed to be a new discovery is really original or new. It could not manifest unless it was already in the mind. It was of course very subtle and remained imperceptible because it lay <coughs> repressed by the more urgent or insistent thoughts or vasanas. When they have spent themselves this thought arise and by concentration the light of the self makes it clear so that it appears magnificent original and revolutionary. In fact, it was only within all along. This concentration is called Samyamana in the Yoga Shastras. One's desire can be fulfilled by this process and it is said to be a Siddhi. It is how the so-called new discoveries are made. Even worlds can be created in this manner. Samyamana leads to all Siddhis, but they do not manifest so long as the ego lasts. Concentration according to yoga ends in the destruction of the experience or yoga. Experience and the world and then the kundam former desire get fulfilled in a due course. This concentration bestows on individuals even the powers of creating new worlds. It is illustrated in the Andava Upkhana in the Yoga Vasishta and in the Ganda Sala Loka in the Tripura Rahasya. 
although the powers appear to be wonderful to those who do not possess them yet they are only transient it is useless to aspire for that which is transient all these wonders are contained in the one changeless self the world is thus within and not without this meaning is contained in verses 11 and 12 chapter 5 of sri ramana gita the entire universe is condensed in the body and the entire body in the heart thus the heart is the nucleus of the whole universe therefore samayamana relates to concentration on different parts of the body for the different siddhis also the viswa or the virat is said to contain the cosmos within the limits of the body again the world is not other than the mind the mind is not other than the heart that is the whole truth so the heart comprises all this is what is taught to svita ketu by the illustration of the seed of a fig tree the source is a point without any dimensions it expands as the cosmos on the one hand and as infinite bliss on the other that point is the pivot from it a single vasana starts multiplies as the experiencer i experience and the world the experiencer and the source are referred to in the mantra two birds exactly alike arise simultaneously when i was staying in the sakanda ashramam i sometimes used to go out and sit on a rock on one such occasion there were two or three others with me including ranga swami ayangar suddenly we noticed some small moth like insect shooting up like a rocket into the air from a crevice in the rock within the twinkling of an eye it had multiplied itself into millions of moths which formed a cloud and hid the sky from view we wondered at it and examined the place from which it shot up we found that it was only a pin hole and a new that so many insects could not have issued from it in such a short time that is how ahankara ego shoots up like a rocket and instantaneously spreads out as the universe the heart is therefore the center a person can never be away from it if he is he is already dead although the upanishad say that the jiva functions through other centers on different occasions yet he does not relinquish the heart the centers are simply places of business vidya vedanta chudamani the self is bound to the heart like a cow tethered to a peg the movements are controlled by the length of the rope all its wandering center around the peg a caterpillar crawls on a blade of grass and when it has come to the end it seeks another spot while doing so it holds on with its hind legs to the blade of grass lifts the body and sways to and fro before it can hold another similarly it is with this self it stays in the heart and holds other centers also according to circumstances but its activities always center round the heart talk number 617 there are five states for the individual they are number 1 jagrat number 2 swapna number 3 susupti number 3 turiya number 5 turiyatita of these the jagrat is the waking state in it the jiva in the viswa aspect and the lord in the virat aspect abiding together in the eight petals of the heart lotus function through the eyes and enjoy novel pleasures from various objects by means of all the senses organs etc the five gross elements which are widespread the ten senses the 
five vital ears, the four inner faculties, the twenty-four fundamentals, all these together form the gross body. The Jagrat state is characterized by Sattva Guna denoted by the letter A and presided over by the deity Vishnu. The Swapna is the dream state in which the Jiva in the Tejasa aspect and the Lord in the Hirne Garbha aspect abiding together in the corolla of the heart lotus function in the neck and experience through the mind the results of the impressions collected in the waking state all the principles the five gross elements the will and the intellect 17 in all together form the subtle body of the dream which is characterized by the Rajoguna denoted by letter U and presided over by the deity Brahma. So say the wise. The Susupti is the state of deep sleep in which the Jiva in the Prajna aspect and the Lord in the Iswara aspect abiding together in the stamina of the heart lotus experience the bliss of the supreme by means of the subtle avidya ni science just as a hen after roaming about in the day calls the chicks to her and folds them under her wings and goes to rest for the night so also the subtle individual being after finishing the experiences of the jagrat and Swapna for the time being enters with the impressions gathered during those states into the causal body which is made up of any science characterized by Tamoguna denoted by the letter M and presided over by the deity Rudra. Deep sleep is nothing but the experience of pure being. The three states go by different names such as the three regions, the three forces, the three deities, etc. The being always abides in the heart as stated above. If in the Jagrat state the heart is not relinquished, the mental activities are stilled and Brahma alone is contemplated. The state is called the Turiya. Again, when the individual being merges in the Supreme, it is called the Turiyatita. Vegetable kingdom is always in Susupti. The animals have both Swapna and Susupti. The gods, celestials are always in Jagrat. Man has all the three states. But the clear-sighted yogi abides only in Turiya and the highest yogi remains in Turiyatita alone. The three states alternate involuntarily for the average man. The last two, Turiya and Turiyatita are however the result of practice and form clear aids to liberation of the other three states, Jagrata, Swapna and Susupti. Each one is exclusive of the other two and limited by the conditions of time and space. They are therefore unreal. Our very experience of the Jagrat and the Swapna states proves that the consciousness as the self underlies all the five states, remains perfect all along and witnesses all of them. But with the regard to similar consciousness in the deep sleep, every person is known to say, I was not aware of anything, I slept soundly and happily. Two facts emerge from the statement, unawareness of anything and the happiness of sound sleep. Unless these existed and were experienced in sleep, they could not find expressions by the same person in the waking state. Inference also leads to the same conclusion, just as the eye seems the darkness which remains enveloping and objects, so also the self sees the darkness of knee science which remained covering the phenomenal world. This darkness was experienced when it the self emerged in dots of supreme bliss, shone a trice and fleeted away in such fine subtlety as the rays of the moon which peer through the waving foliage. 
The experience was, however, not through any media such as the senses of the mind, but bears out the fact that consciousness does exist in deep sleep. The unawareness is owing to the absence of relative knowledge and the happiness to the absence of seething thoughts. If the experience of bliss in deep sleep is a fact, how is it that no one among all the human beings recollects it? A diver who has found the desired thing underwater cannot make his discovery known to the expectant persons on the shore until he emerges from the water. Similarly, the sleeper cannot express his experience because he cannot contact the organs of expression until he is awakened by his vasanas in due course. Therefore, it follows that the self is the light of Sat Chit Ananda. Viswa Tejasa and Prajna are the denominations of the experiencer in the waking dream and deep sleep states respectively. The same individual underlies all of them, they do not therefore represent the true self which is pure Sat Chit Ananda. The experience in deep sleep was said to be the bliss of Burma. It is only the negative aspect of such blisses, as it is the result of the absence of thoughts. Moreover, it is transitory. Such a bliss is only the abhyasa, the counterfeit of supreme bliss. It is not different from the blissful feeling of sensual pleasures. In deep sleep, the prajna is said to be united with the self, so the individuality is potential in sleep. The self the self is the basis of all the experiences. It remains as the witness and support of them all. The reality is thus different from the three states, the waking, the dreams and the deep sleep. Talk number 623. Sri Bhagwan said to another devotee that there are five states. Number one, sleep. Number two, before waking, a state free from thoughts. Number three, sense of happiness of that freedom from thoughts, Arasavada. Number four, the internal moment of the Vasanas, Kasya. And fifth, complete waking with the distraction, Vikshepa. The second of those should be made permanent. Talk number 625, Miss Merston, an English lady visitor, I have read Who Am I, while inquiring who the who the I is, I cannot hold it for any length of time. Secondly, I have no interest in the environment, but yet I have hopes that I shall find some interest in life. Mercy, if there are no interest, it is good. The interpreter points out that the questioner hopes to find some interest in life. Mercy. That means there are those vasanas, a dreamer dreams a dream, he sees the dream world with pleasures, pains, etc. But he wakes up and then loses all interest in the dream world. So it is with the waking world also. Just as the dream world being only part of yourself and not different from you ceases to interest you, so also the present world would cease to interest you. If you Awake from this waking dream sansara and realize that it is part of yourself and not an objective reality. Because you think that you are apart from the objects around you, you desire a thing but if you understand that the thing was only a thought form, you would no longer desire it. All things are like bubbles on water, you are water and objects are the bubbles. They cannot exist apart from the water, but they are not quite the same as the water. So, I end this video here. Please like, comment and share the video and subscribe the channel. Thanks a lot. Namaskar, my dear friends.